day 109. In the worst day of losses since the ground offensive in Gaza began, 24 soldiers were killed yesterday, 21 in a single incident. They came from every corner of the country, were aged between 22 and 40. They were students, fathers, academics, businessmen, farmers, brothers, sons. Troops were operating in an area around 600 metres from the border with Israel, close to the community of Kisufim, destroying structures and Hamas sites as part of the army's efforts to establish a buffer zone to allow residents of Israeli border communities to return to their homes. At around 4 p.m., an RPG was fired by terrorists at a tank security the forces and simultaneously an explosion occurred at a two-story building. The buildings collapsed while most of the forces were inside and near them. The explosion was likely a result of mines planted by troops who demolished the buildings, but the course of the detonation is still under investigation. For several hours, rescue forces worked to extract the casualties from the collapsed buildings. They described the scene as reminiscent of the aftermath of an earthquake. President Yitzhak Herzog described today as an unbearably difficult morning in which more and more names of the best of our sons are added to the gravestones of heroes when there is no war that is more just. On behalf of the entire nation, I console the families and pray for the healing of the wounded. Even on this sad and difficult morning, we are strong and remember that together we will win. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Defence Minister Yoav Gallant and War Cabinet Minister Benny Gantz gave a joint video statement which included, We bow our heads in memory of our fallen and yet we do not for a moment stop striving for an irreplaceable goal, the achievement of complete victory. Together we will fight, together we will win. Aviva Siegel, who was released from Gaza in November, and her daughter Shia testified in the Knesset this morning that women and men are being raped by terrorists in tunnels under the Gaza Strip. Aviva, who was abducted from her home in Kibbutz Kfar Aza, along with her husband Keith, who is still being held hostage in Gaza, said the terrorists bring inappropriate clothes for the girls, the clothes of dolls. They turn the girls into their dolls, that they can do whatever they like with them. And it's unbelievable that they're still there. I can't breathe. I can't deal with it. It's too hard. It's been nearly four months and they are still there. I want to tell you that the boys go through these things too. They can't get pregnant, but they also go through it. And something must change now. I would like to go back to captivity to protect the girls there like I did when I was there. I felt like they were my daughters. My heart is there and it's exploding. I can't understand how the world is silent. Aviva's daughter, Shia, said her mother's testimony is only the tip of the iceberg and angrily shouted at MKs. They are sitting in captivity. They have not done anything wrong. We have no right to just sit here. We need to scream for them. At this very moment, there is someone being raped in a tunnel. Where are the really important people, the decision makers who sit in the cabinet and aren't hearing this? Aviva and Shia were among the relatives of hostages who slept in the street outside Prime Minister Netanyahu's house in Jerusalem last night in freezing winter rain. This is Peter Jones-Pellach reporting for SBS Radio from Jerusalem.